gum arabic so the gum arabic is for um, creating some texture as well when we may or may not use too much of that uh, and then you're going to need obviously a big brush to get started with we don't want to be using little brushes and um, yeah so we're not going to mask anything out we're just going to because there isn't any real white within the reference there are some light patches the background is actually lighter than the animal but I'm thinking I might actually go darker in the background and maybe even try and create a little bit of um, I don't know like a mist or some hot air coming out of the nose just to give a bit of atmosphere through this section I haven't decided yet but that's the idea okay let's get started so I'm going to go with some um, <clears throat> gum arabic first just a little bit of this now we used this previously on one of the projects so hopefully if you've got some that's great uh, I'm just going to get a brush just dunk some um, dunk my brush into the gum arabic and we're going to use this once the gum arabic's dried. So I'm thinking about the form around the eye, the surfaces, and the advantage of putting the gum arabic on is that we can lift off and we can manipulate the paint. So rather than using white paint to try and create some of the surfaces around the eye structure, I'm going to be lifting paint back out um to do that so i'm just following the the sort of the lumps and bumps that are in the forehead area Stuart, i've never used gum arabic before is it a, a dry brush into the gum arabic or do i want to wet it first no 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 just use your dry brush that's fine okay. you don't need thank to put you. water on your brush thank you okay so coming down the forehead it's mainly the light area I'm going to be putting the gum arabic and then I'm going to be using the clean film mainly in the shadowy area okay so if you want to think of it in that way that's quite helpful so around the eye here so the top of the eye is actually quite quite light and the under part of the eye obviously where the sun is coming um, from the direction of the horns is quite dark so let's put a bit more of that on there. There's a little bit over here, not too much. A little bit, got a bit of colour in my brush, which is a bit annoying, but never mind. Uh, we've got some in the horn, some in the horns here. Kind of working its way up the horn a little bit. Goes darker up there, so I don't need to worry too much. Be easy when we come to manipulate it. So coming down past the eye now, and obviously I appreciate you can't really see much of this that I'm putting on unless the glare is helping you to see it. But once we start to get the paint on this, it will make more sense. So coming up the horn main horn and there's a bit kind of down there Just break the edge up a little bit so coming down to the nose the nose area so around the nose and then we're sort of then going back towards where our shadows are going to be coming in so we don't need to worry about that too much just a bit of light there because there's a bit of a wrinkle up there just even that out okay so that's probably enough of the um the gum arabic on there so i'm going to put that away now and then just quickly dry that off. So we want this dry before we start to paint into it. So bear with me a second.
Right, so that's now nice and dry. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all with the um, painting wise is get a nice big brush. And I'm thinking I want to put an initial an initial color through the animal. Now the animal itself is very sort of bluey gray with a bit of um, sort of a warmer brown in patches. But I want to go a little bit more colorful than that. I don't want to keep it so gray. So I think I'm going to amp colors up a little bit. So my blues are going to be more blue. The warmer colors are going to be more warm. And the shadows are probably would be more blue as well, more blue purpley and a bit of brown. So let's get started. So I'm going to start to wet the whole of the, um, the animal itself. Just with water. And obviously trying to keep it within, within the lines as best I can. And obviously if you go outside the lines, it doesn't really matter, but um, it just makes it easier if you can keep it within the shape. Now this, the reason for doing this, the only thing I'm not gonna do is actually wet or paint the, the eye at the moment. So the eye will tackle as a, as a separate entity. So we're gonna leave that white for the moment. I've just done it as a little circle round around the eye. So all the way up to the top of the horn, all the way through. And down to the nose and the mouth. And then up into its neck. Okay, so looking at the paper, I'm just going to tilt the board down a little bit so it's a bit um, a bit flatter. So I'm looking at the paper to see how see how shiny that is. It's pretty wet at the moment. So when I put the paint on, it's going to spread quite far. And also it's going to dilute the paint uh, quite a bit. So just bear that in mind in terms of when you're mixing your color up. So the first color I'm going to use is some cerulean blue. Just mix up a good quantity of cerulean. And I'm going to put this on just a cerulean to start off with, but I'm going to then start to add some browns and um, some other colors into it. So I'm coming in from the top and just start to drop some of this color in. In a reasonably random fashion. Because remember, this is almost like the under, the under color of the animal. So let's dip now into some um, burnt sienna, into that blue. So it's the blue, cerulean blue and some burnt sienna mixed together, which will gray it down a bit. Let's just work this on. And then let's go with some more cerulean blue. And this time I'm going to put a bit of crimson in it. Just to warm it up. A bit of um, belligerent crimson, which is a red. So we'll work a bit of that in. Okay, and then we'll have some of that in here. Coming up the tusk. And let's go back to our browns, a bit more brown in the blues. So still a base of cerulean blue, but now with some more burnt sienna in it. 
sort of work a bit of this color in. Down to the nose. Very wet down there. I'm going to lift some of that out. Just to keep the shape, just because it's puddling a little bit too much there. So let's drop to a slightly smaller brush. Back into my cerulean blue on its own now. Just want to tidy up the shape a bit more. Get a bit more colour back in to the shape. So the neck kind of goes up there, comes down. Bit more of the blue in and around the eye. So coming down. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush now. I've got a nice clean damp brush. I'm just gonna lift out some of this, as I said, where it's puddling. Tidy up the edge a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to do a teeny bit of lifting out so that we can get that steam effect working. So I'm going to lift out a portion of this area around the nose because that's where my um, or its hot air is going to come out. So just using a damp brush for that, nothing too special. Just lifting the paint back off. Now before this dries in this area, I'm going to use my damp brush and just start to work the um, the colours in towards the eye, so we don't end up with a um, a big dark ring around there. Just pulling them in very, very lightly to work that existing color in. Okay, clean off my brush again. I'm just wiping it off on some tissue down the bottom here, making sure I keep it nice and clean. Oops, a little bit of clean tissue. I'm just going to tidy up this edge a little bit. Okay, now, whilst this is still wet, I don't want to let it dry just yet. I'm actually going to do a little bit of manipulation of the paint to start to try and create some of the form. So over the head ridge or the, the eye here, there's actually a large lump that kind of goes in and back. Now this is working into the um, the gum arabic. So it's lifting off a little bit of the paint, allowing me to modulate or allow me to sort of you know push the paint around a little bit. But also it stained the paper a tiny bit. So you're getting some colour um, and also some lift out. So let's just continue that up forehead, like so. There's a bit of light or quite a big portion of light coming down into that section. Just lift out some there. There's a bit of light over his eyelid. Get a bit more out there. Uh, we've got some light in this section. Roll the brush. So rolling the brush is quite a nice way of lifting out as well, rather than dragging it. It's a bit softer. We get a softer effect. So just rolling the brush over the surface of the paint gives you a very soft lift out. Okay, now coming down into this section, we've got some more lighter parts. 
and there we go. Lifting a bit out through there. And that meets up with the with the eye. Coming down. So because the um, the cerulean blue is a heavier paint than some of the other colours I've put on, it's actually stained the paper quite nicely. So that's why I'm getting this bluish um, colour come through when I'm lifting off these these other colours that are on top, which is quite nice. So it's sort of separated a touch. Now let's do a bit of dragging through the horn area. So I'm sort of dragging it from the, the head outwards to give the sense that it's going in this direction. A little bit more there. Up. Pick out some of these blocks. More there. Perhaps I have a little bit on on this one. It's kind of got a bit of a plateau on his forehead. Okay, now let's tidy up this again. So I think that's probably okay for um, an initial. An initial wash. I'm just going to lift out some of these bits so they're not so puddly. So that when I start to hair dry this, it doesn't push the paint around too much. Um, okay. Last thing I'm going to do is just give it a little spray in a few in a few spots. So I'm just going to tilt the board back a bit again. So I just want to give a little bit more movement to some of the colour, particularly where I've just lifted some off, just to soften and allow the paint to move a touch more. Okay, that's enough. Right, so what I'm going to do now is dry off the, um, the painting. <clears throat> Before I do that, I'm just going to lose this bottom edge to nothing. So I'm just going to take some clean water and just disappear this whole edge because obviously this is where it's, its head's kind of down towards the ground and I want it to be um, give that sense of that hot air coming out of its mouth. We can. Let's just block that away. I've dried off now. We'll wet the shape, the whole shape, and then we'll start to drop our colours in. Um, and then we'll put the clean film on top of that. That's the plan. So, I'm going to take my big brush and just start to cut in. Is that clean? Cleanish. It's got a little bit of colour in there. So just start to cut in the shape around the animal. So this is what you might call the negative space. All the way around the rhino. Try as best you can to use clean water for this. 
otherwise you'll end up just putting down a, a very, very thin, thin wash, um, which will pollute the colour. Coming in around the animal there, all the way around. What you may find as well is that as you're doing this, the water is going to collect along this edge and this edge. So before we start to drop the colours in, we'll tip the board to get the paint to move a little bit and um, stop it collecting in those areas. So let's bring some color down there, all the way through, down to the bottom and then away. Okay, so making sure it's nice and moist, because the, what you don't really want is this to start to dry out before you put your put your colours on. Okay, so colour wise, uh, I think I'm going to go reasonably dark as I said. So I'm going to dip into some um, some brown and a bit of purple. I think so brown and purple together. It's going to be reasonably warm and obviously the animal itself is fairly cool so hopefully this should work together perhaps we've got a little bit sorry Stuart could you just repeat those colors again yep so just burnt umber and some purple and i'm putting a bit more blue in it there we go so just put a bit more um, blue into the, this cobalt blue into the mix. Just tilt the board a bit more as well. Just to get the, um, the color a little bit darker. Because obviously I want the rhino's head to stand out. So let's move this up and away. I'm going to dip into a bit of brown now as well as the blue. So burnt, burnt, a bit of burnt sienna just to warm it up a touch more with those blues. So it's still pretty dark. And then we come down into where the middle section of the tusk is. Out from the tusk so that the paint moves away from the animal. We're going to need to take that. Let's get that tipping. I'll let it come back down again just for the moment while I carry on the wash. A bit more blue as I'm coming down the, uh, the animal. And as I said, when we get to the this bottom section, I want to actually try and get that misty effect. So I'm going to have to wash out an amount of this color to give me that effect. So a bit more blue and purple together here. Not very realistic colors, but hey ho. And cutting in. Bring a bit of that from here down. 
now is to come into this section where the um, that misty thing is going to come. So I'll paint it in like so. Now I need to get a dipper. I'm just going to put some clean water in my dipper. And then I'm going to tilt the board and then we're going to run the water from the nose and away. So we'll just let it run away all the way over. Hopefully that's still in shot. Keep running it away until it's giving me that light enough effect. I'm going to tilt that a little bit. So you see where it's kind of washed the paint out? That's kind of what we're after. Just going to even out the wash a touch more. To lay that flat. My spray bottle. I'm actually going to spray out a little bit of this as well because. I want it a bit more even. Even that out a bit more. <clears throat> Don't want it to collect too much around those tusks. Let's just tip that away. Get some tissue, mop it up. Just mopping up all that excess paint that's running off the board. Just so that when I run it or lay it flat again, it's not going to puddle too much. <clears throat> Let's tip it over this way a bit. Okay, let's just lay that back down reasonably, reasonably flat. Now a couple more edges just to take care of. So with a damp brush and some tissue. I'm actually just going to manipulate, just soften off this edge here, just putting a little bit of moisture into that edge, just to allow the paint to creep a touch. And it's going to be fairly dark edge. I don't need to worry too much, but I just don't want it to be too sharp. Soften these bits off a bit. And again, let's soften off down here. And this is really just to create a little bit of form on the edge to give the idea that the it rolls over and away rather than just stops dead. And it also helps to stop the feeling of the, um, the animal just being stuck onto this dark background. It will hopefully enable the colours to live together a bit happier. running the damp brush along the edge. Really, it's just trying to lose things like this where we've got a very sharp line. That's more about just trying to manipulate it to give it a soft edge. Let's do the same down here. Run it along. Now you don't want to do this with too much water in your brush, um, else it'll push out into the background a bit too much. And occasionally that's all right. You know, you, it doesn't matter too much. But if you if you if you in, if you allow too much moisture from this edge, 
it's going to push out and it will create big cauliflowers in that wash that you just put on. So you want to make sure you keep this reasonably, really not dry, but only moist. So I'm just touching the brush onto some tissue here um, in order to keep it, keep it soft. Okay. That will probably do that, I think. So let's give that a dry now. Oh, in fact, before we do that, I need to put some clean from on there. I I was going to clean from it. So just take some clean film, or some wrapping, whatever you've got, and then you can just lay it onto this big wash. And really, you then just need to leave it. You can't do anything once you put this on. You've got to just let it um, do its thing. So try not to get it on the animal, otherwise you won't be able to paint the animal. So fairly haphazardly. Not worried too much about making any particular pattern. just to give me some texture in that background. And as I said, once this is, once you put this on, you've basically just got to leave it alone um, to do whatever it's going to do. if you keep lifting it whilst uh, the watercolour paint underneath is wet you just lose the effect um, so you want to make sure that you just put it on and then leave it alone more of it put in that top part it's too long that one. So this isn't a cut. Let's put a bit more up here. Put a bit there. <clears throat> and then I think I want a little bit more. bits in between the here and there. Perhaps a little bit too dry there now. That's okay, we'll just leave that to do its thing. Okay. So can't hair dry that. I've got to leave it. Um, to do whatever it's going to do, you start to hair dryer it. It just blows off the um, blows off the clean film, and then you end up with a in a bit of a pickle. So let's just cut a bit of that off. That one's in the way. This is going to cut. Just want to make a bit of space, so I can paint the animal whilst this is. This is drying. So we should have just got some ordinary clean film. Just trying to recycle some old plastic wrapping. Okay, we'll leave that on there, see what happens. Okay, so now then let's turn our attention back to the back to the animal. So I think what we'll probably do is we'll work out kind of concentrically into the shadows and from the eye 
start to build up some of these areas that give the animal some form. And hopefully this will be reasonably dry then and we'll take all that off and then we can try and pull the whole thing together. And pain's grey. Pain's grey, that pain's grey. As a base for the eye. But then I'll probably be dropping in some browns and some purples and other colours. So not too too dark, sort of an inky consistency. And then I'm going to start to just shape up where I want the eye to come. So we've got this sort of tear duct shape that sort of wiggles its way down. And then the actual eye seems to be in this fold area, which is a dark shape. Kind of comes up and then it gets into a big, goes into a big, um, or bigger, larger shape within all those folds. Just pull out a little bit of the, um, the creases creases there. They're just slightly bigger brushes. This is my rigger. And I'm going to get a brush that I've got some water in. So I'm going to lay some water into this section. So I want to paint into and out of that dark area. It's got some moisture there to work into. So these are going to be some darker patches creases. So thinking of the eye as almost like a, a round shape. So this is going to be quite round here, then it's going to be round over the top, top there. And then this sort of comes up. And then we've got creases and all sorts going on. Coming back, pull that in a little bit, maybe a little bit purple in there as well. A bit of purple within that shadow colour. Coming under this larger bold shape. It's a bit browner. As we come out on the left here, a bit more water. So just pulling out the paint, trying to allow some of the under color to show through. We don't lose all this nice initial color. And then we just bring it up and over, soften these edges out. And then this sort of disappears to nothing. As the fold goes up and over. And these get pulled out into some more sort of craggy shapes folds and all sorts. Okay, so that's enough there. So now let's think about the top section. Now remember in the top section around the eye, we actually have um, gum arabic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet, just using water on my brush, I'm just wetting some of that area and then I'm going to use some tissue and just lift out some of the colour that we've already put on, start to build the form around the eye. And by form what I'm talking about is the, the way that the light is falling on the surface 
So surfaces that are more directly pointed towards the, um, the light source from our left hand side over here will have more light on them than the surfaces that are turned away from the light. And that's what we're trying to create. So we're just trying to create the illusion of different surfaces facing different ways. I'm just going to take some very dilute Payne's grey. And then where I've just lifted off the colour there, I'm going to run a little bit of that light grey. So just by putting more water in it. It's a very, very light wash back into that edge to help me start to what's called half tone or put a half tone of color between the these darks and the um, the lighter colors that we're putting on or we've just lifted out. So you see here where it's very, very white. And here we put on some gray. In between the two, if we just rub the brush, we can just lose the edge and half tone the color into what's already there. So we don't have a hard edge. Obviously with this being a rhino, a few hard edges here and there aren't gonna to be too much um, of an issue. We just don't want them in the wrong place because they suggest uh, the wrong, the wrong shape. Okay, so now let's just tickle that a little bit there. And pull the eye down a touch more there. Okay, I might need to manipulate that again later, but for the moment, I think that's enough. So let's work out from there now. So coming over towards this first tusk, we sort of get this S shape where the skin has kind of grown up and over. So I'm gonna do a bit more lifting out, just with some tissue and water. So this is kind of what's called a subtract subtractive method of painting. So Painting is not always about adding. Sometimes by taking away, you actually create just as good effect as adding. Um, now, if you try to do this with white into your watercolor paint and you mix white into the paint itself, you would end up with a very, very muddy gray, um, polluted color. So by lifting out, you're actually letting the paper shine through. And that's very important with watercolor because watercolor is a very translucent medium. And if you start to put too many opaque colors in, then um, you lose that translucency and it starts to become very heavy looking and um, not, not like a watercolor, becomes more like a mixed media or a different type of painting. So always wanna be very careful of using white in watercolor. Not to say you can't use it, I mean, you can, and people do use it very successfully. Just you have to be a little bit careful with it. Now I'm taking some cerulean blue and a bit of purple we're getting into a shadow area here now in the back of the eye socket. I'm just going to bring some of this color down, perhaps up into there a little bit to suggest those folds. Coming down into that shadow, a bit more shadow that comes down underneath the eye. Let's make it a bit darker. And then we're into a good bunch of folds. So I'm going to use my rigger again. 
back to some diluted grey. And then with the point of the rigger, we're just going to pull out some shapes to suggest those wrinkles. I don't want to paint every single wrinkle. I just want to suggest um, some of them that are there, a bit more purple. And then we're coming down really into the main shadow here now. So I need to go for a bigger brush and dip into some more cerulean blue into my purple colors. So, a more purple. And a bit of the paint gray just to knock the shadow down a touch. So quite a purpley shadow this one. Coming across, just link that to that. And then we come down into this whole mass of um, shadow. Now, obviously, this edge here needs to be a bit softer, so I'm just going to take some water, run it along the edge, run it through there just to keep it soft while I'm fiddling around with this bottom part. So let's just run this blue, blue shadow. Blue. So I want it fairly blue, this shadow. At the bottom of the, um, the jawline. brown in there as well. <laughs> and now this section here, we want to make sure that this is soft because we're turning into the light here. So let's put some water through there. Allow that shadow to creep into it. A bit more water. And then we're coming down to the mouth where the, oops, big hair there. Try and lift that off, it's in the way. So we've got a big um, shadow coming all the way down, that purple, purple and gray, which creates the shape of the head. And then we'd sort of tuck under. And then use a bit of moisture again just to soften off that edge. So there's a lot of shapes, a lot of shapes down in this area um, where you've got the mouth and you've got the um, obviously the skull underneath the rhino's head skin that's creating a lot of these shadow shapes. You try and see them just as shapes rather than um, trying to paint a nose or um, anything too complicated. Just try and see them as actual just shapes that we're trying to replicate. So that will kind of link up there. worry too much about that. Okay, so let's turn our attention back to that top edge. Pull this out a little bit. So up here now, where it's coming up to the neck, back to my blues, blues and greys. So using some cobalt blue here and cerulean and Payne's gray. And remember, because we're going back into an area that's already got paint on it, just make sure it's reasonably thick. Otherwise you'll, uh, you're just gonna cauliflower everything. 
bring that down a touch more there. And then this big shadow comes all the way up. More purple, more Payne's gray. So this shadow comes all the way up towards the ear. It kind of folds over, comes back, wiggles its way all the way up, like so. so let's just soften that edge while we can in places. It needs to be very soft in here. Soft there. So we can actually pull that out a little bit further. Soften all that off. Let's pull this out a bit more. Just folds there. A few more lines just to give crease effect. So then let's continue the shadow up and away. Let a little bit come here to just tidy that up. So more brown, just to warm it up. We've actually got a bit of shadow in the back of the head there. And then this is all folds. Just let that be dark. Pretty dark through there. That's our main shadow. Okay, just to clean my brush off. Just need to do a little bit of tipping and work a few of these edges. So let's pull this out a bit. Let's work this edge. In there, a few more folds. There's a few direction marks going this way because the folds go around the head that way. Okay, let's now get the um, some of this shadow into the horn, into that horn, and then start to get the forehead um, and the horns working together. So the shadow on the horns is not quite as dark as this large main shadow that we had um, through the back of the head and neck. Although it's, it is dark, but it's not as dark. So I'm gonna have a slight color change as well. I think I wanna go a little bit Kind of a bit greener. I'm going to mix up some viridian as well to go into my colours. I'll be using the similar colours as I was using before, so the blues, the purples, but also having a little bit of the um, viridian in it as well, just to supplement. So just mixing up a portion of that. Okay. So same thing then, I'm gonna get some moisture on my brush. Actually, before I start at all, I'm gonna get some clean water because my water's filthy. Let me just go and do that quick.
So it's clean water now. So let's make a start. So a damp brush and tissue. So I'm going to start off by putting some moisture into the um, into the horn. In fact, I need to peel this back a little bit because it's in the way. There we go. Never mind. So I'm going to re-wet this top edge of the horn. Coming down, and then bring some. I'm going to start with a bit of green. I need to tilt the board a bit. I can't see the glare is too much. So a bit of green. I'm going to have a green horn. As I said, this is going to be a bit more colourful than than the reference. Uh, I might put a bit of blue in there as well. More blue, I should say. We're coming down the horn towards the um, the lip area. So then we're actually coming into some lighter elements. So if we come down, so I'm going to miss a bit and then go dark here because this is where the shadow. Um, carrying on through through the bottom of this horn. It's going to fill that in dark. And then continue up just on dry, not all the way to the edge, but just let it disappear on the corner there. Take my damp brush and just soften that off a little bit. I'm going to pull it out as well. So just pull the colours out into the area around it. Just get that shadow a little bit softer. Okay. I need to bring this down now towards the mouth area. The shadow sort of comes down the front lip and then down towards the nose. And then we get all of these folds. So it goes slightly purple into those greeny blues. Just as a color change. So a bit more purple. And let that just come down the lip. Knock a bit of that paint up my brush. And then it comes all the way down to the bottom lip, sort of there back up there's all these folds <coughs> i'm just going to get my rigger just create some of these folds off of the front of the nose which also help with the drawing a bit darker there some darks in here. There's a nice big crease. It's got more cerulean blue now. Nice big crease in here. And we're getting a bit more blue under the tusk on the edge. Some more cerulean. Bring that into the shadow here. Run 
few little drawing marks just for the cerulean really to break up the edge of this larger shadow and give the idea that it's sort of a long structure bring this more dark in there I think there's a big crack in, in this hall. Same on this one. It kind of goes uphill there a little bit. Now I need some lighter, sort of Payne's grey, very washy, with plenty of water in it. Um, marks just to start to um, give me some half tones. This is just using Payne's grey with water. Um, now obviously where they meet the two colours might get a little bit of cauliflower in, but I'm not too bothered about that. I think the um, the gum arabic is going to take care of a lot of that it slows the paint down, stops it moving so quickly. A bit more of the idea that this is a round structure. And this is just really drawing now, but with a brush in my hand. Um, so I'm just looking at the reference, looking to see where I can create some little half tones. Um, and give the illusion of roundness. Look, dark there. And then continuing up. So we're then coming into the structures around the other horn. Break this up a little bit. Got that off because it's a bit heavy. No water. So then the structures around this horn kind of come in an S shape. So it sort of comes down off the back of the horn. And that goes up, up the hill. And there's a few structures coming off the forehead there. Coming across. And then it starts to turn the corner. And then we've got more wrinkles and bits and pieces over here. on the edge of that shadow. A little more half tone here. Just to suggest that this is a slightly different surface to the other one. A bigger brush for that. Knock that across, clean that up. Okay, and then perhaps a bit more of a browny grey, a burnt sienna into that into that colour, the paint grey. Start to look at the forehead here. 
bring some structures down. So we're kind of coming out in some sort of crease going down the forehead. In there somewhere. And then it kind of comes down and around. So down and around from the ear. So this is one of his ears just up here. We've got all these little craggy bits. A few dips and dots here and there. More water. And pull that out. A bit more grey as we come down this side of the head. So these bits kind of come up, and then they sort of duck back down into that, it's like a gully, it looks like, some description. Slightly more brown. So brown and gray again. Seem to have a slight more um, dip in the forehead here. Above this eye, which then leads down into those shadow structures that we created earlier. So we'll just pull that, pull that down into this shadow. More brown. Into the back of the eye. Coming down into the eye itself. And down again into that lower shadow. Okay, and then that would be the time. Okay, another five minutes, and then I'll see how you're all getting on. So, just put a little bit more context on the forehead here. Now, these little half tones really are just to kind of suggest. As I said earlier, that the surface that I'm painting is in a very slightly different orientation to the light than the surfaces on the front. So this gives him kind of a side to the head by making this marginally darker than this. This reads as though it's turning towards the light. And this reads as though it's turning away from the light. And that's the illusion that we're trying to suggest. So just a few more of these brownie marks in here to give a bit more context. Break those up with a few lines on the edge. Coming down. Mark of that shadow, I think, here. Which goes into quite a dark bit of shadow over here before it goes into the main, the main area of shadow. Let's just break up these shapes a bit. Give the illusion that that's 
folds. And then we come down here into this folded area before we then into the main shadow. Okay, just a couple more little folds down in the fork mouth and then I'll, um, I'll see how you're all getting on. So I'm just going to half turn this edge around the nostril. Just to turn the edge over a little bit. More half tones there. Just to give the mouth a little bit of structure. Can't really see what's going on with that mouth totally, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I want to lighten all this off because that's where our misty bits coming through. Back to my rigger. Let's just pull these shapes out a little bit more. So these folds kind of follow the contour of the of the head a little bit. It's just suggest that it's almost like painting branches on a tree in a way, just as long as you don't go too stringy on the end. But some of these little shapes are like little diamonds almost little diamond shape so you can kind of just inter interlock some of these lines to give the feeling of that. It's a bit more there. And obviously I don't want to fiddle with this too much. Um because it can get a little bit overdone if you're not careful. Okay, I think I'll call it there for the moment.